So what are the advantages of hip resurfacing? I think uh, I missed some of the demonstrations, but clearly the demonstrations would have uh, gone through a lot of those advantages. But just to list them, it preserves femoral bone stock. That just means it preserves that amount of bone that we saw. Um, it reproduces the natural anatomy of the hip, and we'll talk more about each of these points in terms of length, offset, and antiversion. It avoids stress shielding. It, we're gonna go through these things. Uh, metal on metal eliminates that polyethylene debris, which can create holes in your bone, inflammation, osteolysis. It is a more stable joint, for sure. It is an easier revision in my mind. <clears throat> so going through each of those points, in terms of physio physiologic loading, what I mean by that is our, our hips take load from the top. So we're going to step on our hip, we're going to place load on that. With a total hip replacement here on the left, it goes to the ball, it's transmitted to a metal stem, and then it goes inside the bone, which is called hoop stresses. So that's a different model than on the right, which is a hip resurfacing, taking load from the top, loading it through your femoral neck, just as your own hip would. And what that does is it preserves bone. So if you do a DEXA bone scan of resurfacings, and people have done this, and compared it to a total hip, these are just, uh, these are numbers that basically show after a total surface arth arthroplasty, which is a resurfacing, the numbers are greater than before surgery. So you, you actually build bone in those areas, whereas with a hip replacement, it, it dissolves, basically, because you're not loading it the same way. I mean, these are still good numbers, but um, if you could preserve the bone and normally load it, I think that's, that's better. So this, a newer study showed 8% gain versus 14% loss with a total hit. <clears throat> this, is, this is a picture that sums it all up. So in terms of preservation of the femoral bone, this patient has one of each. So on the right side here, his hip, he has a, a total hip replacement. You can see the stem going into the thigh, and he's basically had you know, this bone removed, and the resurfacing basically preserved all of this bone here. I did a study um, <clears throat> basically looking at the amount of bone. We weighed the bone reamings, or the bone removed, and clearly you could see that um, we saved about 300% of the bone on the femur, just because we moved three times less bone, clearly. And then in the acetabulum, this is another argument that people will say, is that, oh, you save bone on the femur, but you take more from the pelvis. And I don't find that to be true at all. So we didn't find any difference in the amount of bone we removed from the pelvis. And I think it's important that anybody doing your surgery do it in a way that preserves your acetabular bone also. <clears throat> Um, problem with total hip replacement is dislocation. So uh, clearly, you know, the ball is not connected to the socket. It can come out with extreme movements. Um, dislocation as a reason for revision surgery is also increasing. This is a slide from the Swedish registry. This purple is more recent. This blue is earlier. So in the more recent times, the rate of revision for dislocation is going up. And I think that's because people are becoming more active and uh, they're expecting more from their hips. They're doing more and it's pushing the limits, whereas a total hip can't, maybe can't do that. And it, it's definitely proven a bigger ball <coughs> achieves better stability. <clears throat> so this is a patient, um, unfortunately, who, um, well, she had a hip resurfacing on this side. Um, she, was six, she was 59 at the time. Um, five years later, she was very happy with this, but in the times have changed. She got nervous about hip uh, resurfacing, was nervous about the metals. She went to a different surgeon, had a hip replacement. So she had her left hip replaced because the surgeon said resurfacing is absolutely the wrong thing for you. And then look at what happened after that. So she had her left hip, you know, replaced and unfortunately, you know, she thought it was going to work well and uh, six months later uh, dislocated, dislocated a couple more times and ended up needing a revision. So that's what can happen. Uh, this is a patient of, uh, of Dr. Amstutz, who's a ballet dancer. You've probably seen this slide before. That's Derek McMinn. And he's admiring this uh, range of motion. <laughs> so it, just, it just shows, uh, you know, the larger ball confers a lot of stability. So, um, <laughs> no. <laughs> and uh, this is a patient of mine who three months after is demonstrating her range. And this is, this is Kunda Smet, another good colleague of mine. And he's, he's <laughs> also admiring her, her range of motion. So, so, um, 
it's definitely increased stability. In terms of better recreation of normal hip mechanics, what I mean by that is that certain bones have certain shapes. This is what we would call a high offset, a high offset femur. This is a very long distance between the center of rotation and the thigh bone. It's a big guy. So if we look at um, total hip replacement, this is what a hip replacement, none of these options will match his anatomy. It's impossible. It just doesn't, there's not a hip made to match his anatomy. So you should do a resurfacing and restore it the way it should be in terms of length and that position. You just cover the top and it has better mechanics. I think it's an easier revision. So, uh, you know, this is a patient who had a total hip replacement. He, he did go back to high level activity. He fractured his femur while skiing. So here's his break. This is a very difficult operation to do. And I remember this operation because it took me about five hours to do it. I had to piece this together with cables. I had to put a very long rod in. And uh, that's unfortunately how you revise some of these hip replacements. And with the resurfacing, yes, it can break, and it can break here if somebody falls or overdoes it or unfortunately in the beginning uh, has this fracture. But you can do a total hip replacement at that time, and it's, it's very easy, I think, in my mind. So not all revisions are like that, so I don't want to sound glib about that, but uh, most revisions, I think, are pretty straightforward with resurfacing. Um, I think the larger ball confers greater activity. So, you know, if somebody's not afraid of dislocating, this guy is, uh, he actually had bilateral, or uh, ended up having bilaterals, but he's, he's very active. And also, we start that motion quicker. So six weeks, you know, this guy um, already went back to range of motions that, uh, you know, he didn't, he didn't adhere to any restrictions or anything like that. So people... <laughs> People, that guy, uh, by the way, if, I don't know if you ever see this video, but there's a, there's a patient demo that we had once of somebody beating me up, basically, with, I was wearing pads. This is this patient, so he, he basically, uh, he's very, very active, very active. So I think those things, the greater stability, the increased activity, the quicker return to activity, resonate really well with the modern patient and all of you are that modern patient. I think today's patients are unwilling to give up their activity and they would rather take chances on implant longevity for the most part in order to stay active as it's a big part of your lifestyle. I think um, <clears throat> we're going to see more and more data that support that, okay? So these are unpublished studies. They were presented at a conference in Sydney, but there is now 10-year data where they did actually a prospective randomized study. That means the patient didn't know whether they were getting a hip resurfacing or a hip replacement. And they did this in England. And they randomized them to one or the other, and then they scored them with our standard scores. And they found a significantly higher activity score in the hip resurfacing patients at one, five, and 10 years. So I think that's gonna continue. And uh, this other study used a questionnaire. Um, it wasn't quite as rigorous as scientific protocol. They did this post the surgery and they, they looked at people with hip replacements and hip resurfacings, but they called them and said, you know, how active do you consider yourself? They used standard measurements and they found that 80% of hip resurfacing patients considered themselves active compared to less than 50% in total hip. And there was higher <laughs> participation in sports, gym exercise, in contact sports with the resurfacing patients. And fewer patients noted limitations. So I think that all goes to what we've just been talking about. <clears throat> What is the level of activity? So some people ask me, that, can I run on this? Can I lift weights? And I'd say the best example is this patient of mine who uh, is a professional wrestler. He's seven feet tall, 280 pounds, and uh, he returned to wrestling eight months after. And uh, I'll just indulge you guys and indulge me with a video. So this is him returning to WrestleMania. So he actually uh, went back to wrestling. He was very careful. He's a very intelligent guy. He uh, knows his body well, so he didn't... This is him. So he's, he's facing somebody who's 6'6", six, six, and he was careful about it, so he didn't... He, uh, he was careful about uh, loading it, but this is his operated hip, so you can see the positions that he gets into. It was... It was it was, it was very, I mean, he's, he's doing unbelievable activity on these, on these hips, so 
So it's, um, this is when he's, he's had enough now. He's, he's going to take it out. So yeah, you may say, and wrestling may be staged, but um, the things he's doing is real. I think the things he's doing is real. So he's, um, he's a fun patient because he'd call me, he's like, can I do something called the leg drop? And I was like, I have no idea what that is. He's like, just YouTube it, look it up, and you know, it's this thing where he takes his leg and just comes down on a guy's neck. And I was like, yeah, I guess you can do that. <laughs> so, it was a lot of fun. All right, so what are the indications for hip resurfacing? Yes, you can wrestle in the WWE. <laughs> uh, so indications. I think uh, in my mind it's very easy. It's anybody who I think may need a revision hip at some point in their life. And that may be because of age or with activity. So if somebody's involved in impact sports, I think that's going to wear out a total hip faster. Um, if somebody is young and they you know, have, have a lot of years left ahead of them, then there's people I think we need to plan for the future. So in my mind, that is um, <clears throat> a candidate for resurfacing. Arbitrarily, it's 65. I mean, a lot of studies have looked at 65 as the cutoff. It's not a hard and fast cutoff. It's more bone quality and activity level and things like that. Osteonecrosis is an indication. People who have, uh, unfortunately, dead bone at an early age, that's what that is, and that they can have resurfacing. Or uh, hip arthritis in the context of, of deformity. So this is a patient who had uh, previous surgery and deformity and trauma, and this is a, a bowed femur. It's very difficult to get a regular hip replacement in this. So if you cap it, then that's a lot easier. <clears throat> Uh, relative contraindications, and uh, these are relative, meaning it's not an absolute, and older patients, as I said before, relative contraindication, mostly because they would do really well with a total hip and possibly not um, be subject to the risks, which we're going to talk about, of re resurfacing. Osteoporosis, relative contraindication. If your bone is weaker, you might fracture. Then again, I've done people with osteoporosis, and they've gradually built up their bone again, and as we saw, the bone can respond to that, so it's still possible. Rheumatoid arthritis is an inflammatory condition. The immune system is a little bit different, so there's questions about whether or not they may respond differently to the metals, and that remains to be seen. People with difficult anatomy, so uh, leg calvae perthes, which is severe, dysplasia, all of these things, they would have to be quite severe in order to prevent it. This is a patient, you, could, uh, you may be able to tell that their anatomy is very, very altered and it'd be hard to resurface, there's almost nothing to resurface here. Mm -hmm. So a hip replacement would do really well and be able to restore the mechanics better. Impaired renal function, that's why I asked a lot of you about kidney issues. Your kidneys are extremely important at getting rid of the metals. So people with impaired renal function, they may have a buildup of the metals. So that's something that uh, is a relative contraindication.